And here I am, having begun my initial studies of Damascus. I'm a teenager. I'm, I was very young. It's just a teenager. And my parents, Jazahum Allah al khair, said, you know, they had a group of family friends, like many of you have family friends they would meet with regularly. We'd go to each other's houses and so on. And so they said, well, everybody now is a teenager. Maybe we should make sure that all this Islamic knowledge we've been telling them in their Islamic schools and their Sunday schools and their Saturday schools, yes, we also went to Saturday school, <laughs> and all of the extra things that you know, we've been teaching them to make sure it's really resonating. How do you make sure that teenagers really understand the deen that you've been teaching them? So the, the parents, the ammus in the group, <laughs> decided that each teenager was going to go ahead and give a lecture. To whom? To the parents. <laughs> and before I knew it, I was picked to be the first one. <laughs> and I went to my father and I said, my mother, I said, I, I, I don't have anything to speak about. I, what am I going to talk about? They said, anything, anything, everything that you've been, you know, reading and studying and just anything. Don't worry about it. Well, right before that, right before that, I had been to a conference, one of my first, and I'd heard some really amazing speakers speak at this conference. And Sheikh Omar outdated himself, so I'm going to outdate myself too, <laughs> inshallah. And the, the speakers were amazing, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. My very first, <laughs> my very first encounter was I was, uh, they asked me to volunteer and to give out little note cards to the people who are uh, sitting in the lecture to collect questions. So here I am with a stack of note cards and I'm kind of just going around giving different people. And then the speaker gets up on the stage and he starts to speak. And I, can, and tell, I can't even begin to tell you the amount of eloquence and the Arabic and the English and the so on and the Quran and I had never heard anything like this. I was standing in the middle, apparently, in the middle of the aisle, I was, right, because I was giving out note cards, to where somebody had to tap me on the shoulder and go, move. <laughs> The speaker was Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. I didn't know who Sheikh Hamza was at the time. And I remember finishing that lecture and running over. We were in the youth hall and the parents were in the adult hall. And running over and going, Mama, Mama, and looking for my mom frantically and going, there is this person <laughs> and he's a convert and he can speak, <laughs> and he can speak Arabic, yes. <laughs> and, he can, <laughs> and he's, and it's amazing. And she said, Tayyib, Tayyib. And then right after that, the next lecture in the Arabic hall, right, that was giving, being, lectures being given in Arabic, was the same speaker. Shah Hamza just finished giving us a talk in English and then gave the parents their talk in Arabic. <laughs> and then my mother said, oh, <laughs> this is very special. So I took on that night, I took cassette tapes back home. And I also, in that conference, heard an amazing other speaker. Really, really taken, subhanAllah, just amazing. When you think of the young hearts, what, what, these, what these lectures do to young hearts, and took on the cassette tape. So back to the story of my father when he asked me to prepare the lecture. I was looking frantically through the, my stuff. I was like, what do I do? I need to prepare. I don't know what to... <laughs> pulling books off shelves and figuring out. And then I went through my stack of cassette tapes, and I pulled out a tape titled... Whom do you follow? Whom do you follow? It was by Imam Siraj Wahaj, which is the other dear speaker that, I had, spoke, that had spoken at that conference and really touched the heart. And you know what I did? I copied every single line from, <laughs> from his lecture, literally. And in the lecture, I hope you hear this lecture one day, every few sentences he says, whom do you follow? And then he would keep going, whom do you follow? And keep going, mashallah. So I would write, whom do you follow? Every single time. And when it came to my turn that weekend to, teach, to, to give the lecture, I held, I sat between the mom's uh, hall, the woman, where the woman's sitting, where the men were sitting, they put me in the middle. <laughs> and I held the, the papers, and I gave my very first lecture ever. In the words of Yadam Siraj al Hajj, whom do you follow? Letter by letter, word by word. Allah is al khair. For, especially for those of you who have been in my halakas, <laughs> you're all giggling right now. Yes, this is how we started. Now, fast forward a couple more years, just a couple more years, and suddenly I am responsible for putting together a MINA conference. I'm still a high schooler at this point. 
MINA Muslim Youth of North America, which was a youth conference that continues to happen, and I encourage our children to go, and had happened when I was growing up, and I really believe the MINAs, the MSAs, and these kinds of organizations really made firm our Islamic identities. So I was in charge of 300 kids, 300 teenagers like myself, and I have zero previous experience organizing anything. But to show you where we got our start, subhanAllah. And the organizer said, now mind you, this is before email, before texting, before social media, before you literally had a landline with the cord. Yes? That's all there was, no cell phones. Just the landline with the cord. Or you write a letter, a handwritten letter. Those were the only ways you communicate with anybody. They gave me a sheet, and the sheet literally had the names of different speakers and their phone numbers. <laughs> and it said on there things like, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, phone number. Imam Siraj Wahaj, phone number. <laughs> Different era, completely different era. I picked up the phone, here I am, 17. I pick up the phone. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, my name is Rani, I'm organizing a MINA conference, would you be willing to come? Imam Siraj Wahaj. <laughs> Who picks up the line on the other end, and he says, MINA conference? Where? I say, Detroit. He says, put me down. And that was that. And Imam Siraj Wahaj shows up to Detroit because a high schooler asked him to speak at a high school conference. Not MSA college students, not adults, high schooler. He's in New York. He comes out because a high schooler asked him to speak. And if you look at Imam Siraj Wahaj's itinerary, you will see that every day, for, for years on end, he has been traveling all of the communities of this country and the impact he has made in every single one of us without fail. Each of us has stories to share about this person. 